Hey everyone, welcome back to the Photo Booth Supply Co. YouTube channel. My name is Cameron from the Photo Booth Supply Co. Success team, and we are here with another live stream on this wonderful Thursday, this time talking all about how you can make overlays and photo templates in Canva, which is by far one of our most frequently asked questions that we get from both some of our newest booth owners, but also some of our uh, most veteran booth owners as well. So I really hope this video, this live stream helps you guys out, especially when it comes to making these designs um, and I think it's going to be a lot easier than you might anticipate. So we're going to dive right in. It'll probably be a little bit shorter than normal today. But as always, feel free to throw your questions into the chat as I'm going through and showing you guys exactly how to do this. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions as we go along. So to get started, I'm going to share my screen with you guys as always. And there are a couple of things that I want to cover before we actually dive into making the overlays and the photo templates. And that is what is the difference between them, especially if you're just starting out with salsa, if you're just starting out with your with your photo booth, uh, it is uh, it can definitely be a confusing topic, a confusing theme. So I really want to make sure that we address the differences between those. Uh, so I'm going to take a little bit of time to kind of go over that. Now, with that said, you can find the differences between these on our support site. So if you, you know, after this live stream, maybe you're still not getting it 100 percent. Maybe you're more of a, uh, you know, a, a, a person who learns better reading. Uh, you can certainly find the article that I'm going to go over on our support site. So to get to our support site, in case you've never been before, you can go directly to support.photoboothsupplyco.com or you can just click on that support button in the salsa app and this will take you directly to where you need to be so the most important part is going to be the salsa app section this is going to be everything that has to do with um with the salsa app right and you're going to find answers to a lot of really good questions here there's actually one particular article that we talked about last week in last week's live stream that i'm going to be talking about again but before we dive into that like i said i want to talk a little bit about what is a photo template what is an overlay and when might you use one over the other so let's get started with the overlays because i think overlays are probably the easiest one to actually understand and i'm actually going to use this article here photo templates versus overlays to help me uh, explain this a little bit but overlays are essentially kind of what you see on facebook or what you see on instagram on snapchat and you can see an example of it right here so this is going to be the one single photo video, GIF, boomerang, and it's gonna have the one overlay on top of that one single photo, that one single capture. Uh, these are super popular, especially because this is kind of like the, um, I like to think of it as like the modern way to, to create an overlay uh, for your photo booth. It certainly works really well on social media and it's kind of what we're used to. Uh, so the overlay is pretty simple. It's like I said, just one single capture and the overlay will actually work on photo mode, video mode, GIF, boomerang, and so on. So it works on absolutely everything in Salsa. Uh, if you're just starting out with Salsa, I probably would stick with overlays while you're learning and then kind of graduate on the photo templates. Now, with that said, we also have photo templates in Salsa, which is really great. And this is kind of what I, I oftentimes refer to it kind of as like the traditional uh, photo booth style, right? Where you have multiple photos on one single strip. Now that strip, it can be a two by six, it can be a four by six, it can be a six by six. Um, Salsa supports all of those sizes. A lot of times it just comes down to your printer and if you want to print with them now that also brings up a good point you don't have to print photo templates it's not a print template in salsa it's a photo template so you can still use these photo templates uh, on social media on digital booths only you certainly don't have to print with them if you don't want to so that's really something important to uh to keep in mind and if you see me looking down i'm just checking the chat so if you're just joining us, welcome. Uh, feel free to throw any questions in the chat. I'm super happy to, uh, to answer those as we go along. So the one thing that you wanna keep in mind with the photo templates that can kind of trip uh, some of our newer Salsa owners up a little bit is that photo templates only work with photos. And it's in the name, right? But it really will only work with photos. So what happens if you have an event when you're having, you know, maybe the photo mode, but you're also having boomerangs? That's totally fine. You can certainly do that. But 
all of the photos will automatically use the photo template and then any other capture mode, boomerangs, GIFs, videos will use the overlays. So if you are gonna offer photo templates to your clients, you do have to keep in mind that you're likely gonna be creating a photo template alongside an overlay and that's more work, right? And so with more work, make sure you're charging appropriately for that as well. So that's the biggest difference between photo templates and overlays. Um, you know, it's, it's, it can be kind of confusing at first, like I said, but the more you do it, the easier it is to understand. So if you haven't played around with these yet, definitely get out there and, and make some events and play around with it. It'll, I think everything will make a little bit more sense uh, the more you actually use it. So let's kind of just dive right in and get started. Uh, I want to really get straight to the point because I know, like I said, this is one of the most frequently asked questions that we get at Photo Supply SupplyCo is how do I actually make these? So like I was saying, we're going to go back to that article that we talked about last week when we were talking about creating event interfaces. And that's going to be the Salsa file requirements uh, link right here. It's on the support site under the Salsa app section, and it's just under this important links. So you'll click on that. And this is actually going to break down all of the different assets that you can customize inside of Salsa, what their dimensions should be, what the file format should be, and it really helps you when you're creating uh, these custom assets for Salsa. You never have to guess, you never have to do trial and error. You have all the sizes broken down for you here. So I'm gonna get started with overlays and then we'll kind of transition into photo templates. And um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna scroll down. I'm gonna find the overlay section because that's what I wanna make, right? And we can see that with overlays, we actually have a couple different size options that we can use. And that's the cool thing about Salsa is you can actually change the camera ratio, uh, the actual camera aspect to work with portrait style photos, to work with landscape, to be square. But for the purpose of today's live stream, I'm actually gonna make a square overlay. Now I'm doing the square overlay really just because I think it looks best on social media, but also if you're gonna use the virtual booth, you're gonna to wanna to use the square overlay. If you're doing a normal in-person event, you can do portrait, landscape, square, whatever you really feel like. Um, and portrait is probably the second most popular there. But if you're having any sort of virtual aspect to it, it does have to be a square overlay. So we're just gonna pretend that for the purpose of this event, I am making them a square overlay because they are gonna be having a hybrid event where we have an in-person and a virtual side uh, to it. So since I'm gonna make a square overlay, I'm gonna take a look and I need to save it as a PNG file, which is good to know and we'll come back to that at the end. Uh, but I need to make it 2048 by 2048. And these sizes, these dimensions are always gonna be pixels. So whenever you're using Canva or if you're using Photoshop, you wanna make sure that you're selecting pixels instead of like inches or centimeters, um, whatever other options your, your editing program might give you. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch over to Canva. Uh, let me find it here. Perfect. So now that I'm in Canva, I'm gonna click on create a new design. I'm gonna do a custom size and I'm gonna make sure that this is 2048 by 2048 because again, that's what the sizing requirements were on the cheat sheet. So I'm gonna click on create new design and now I'm ready to really get started. The cool thing about uh, Canva and one of the reasons I like to use it so much is because you can already see on this left hand side, there are a ton of different options that we can choose from. Now, Canva will try to give you the best templates based on what it thinks you're making. So in this case, it looks like it probably thinks I'm making, you know, a logo or something along those lines. So we certainly get that kind of uh, that kind of look to it. But this still gives me a really good place to start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna just look for a good example, something that stands out that I might wanna use. Uh, and we're gonna kind of start with that just to keep it really easy. And just to, again, to show you guys how easy this can actually be, um, kind of like I was showing you guys last week with the event interfaces. So I'm gonna take a look and let's do, these ones are getting a little bit busy for my liking. Let's do, Hmm. Maybe I'm gonna scroll back up. I'm gonna do one of those simpler ones. 
uh, to start with. I'll do this one, mostly because I like the font. I like that little flower. We can work with that. So what I'm going to do to kind of start out is we can see that there's a background color here. There, It's that kind of like a cream color for the background. I don't really want that because this is an overlay. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of this altogether. And I'm just going to have my white background and then my text right here. And then, of course, I have my little flower logo right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name. So this is, again, it looks like a logo for a flower shop, but I'm going to turn this into an overlay. And I'm going to go back to our infamous Dominique and Brighton. I'm going to use them as an example today. Uh, so I'm just going to type in Dominique and Brighton. Uh, obviously, you could type in whatever you want here. It could be the name of your company. It could be you know the name of the event, whatever it might be. So I'm going to use this. And I'm actually going to center this, and I'm just going to go up to this alignment tool here and center that so that it's nice and centered for us. And then right here, I actually have additional text, but I think I'm going to get rid of that just for, uh, for now, and I'm going to add that a little bit later. So now that I have the name, I like this font. It looks really good with what I'm going to actually create. So I'm going to put it down here on the bottom, and I'm going to make sure it's aligned in the center. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. And I'll line that in the center there. Now I'm going to try to take advantage of this logo, or maybe I'll actually just use something different just to really kind of start from scratch almost. Um, and what I might even do is I might just raise this up and add the date of their, of their event, which I can do as well. So on the left-hand side here with Canva, you have a bunch of different options. Uh, you can bring in photos or other assets that you have from different programs or that you found online. You can also add text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add, I'm going to do a subheading and I'll make it a little bit smaller and I'll do this as the date. So we'll just do April 1st, 2021. Now the cool thing with Canva as well, and part of the reason I really like it is if I click on this text right here, it's actually going to show me the different fonts that I've already used. So it's really easy to stay consistent. So I'm going to use that same font that I was using for uh, Dominique and Brighton's name there. The one thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to capitalize everything. And you can do that with this little tool right up here. Just make everything uppercase. And I'm going to make this quite a bit smaller because this is just going to be the date. So I don't want it to be too in our face. Maybe I'll make it like 36, for example. Now I can move this down and I can put this right below the name of the event. So it's you know right centered with everything else. And I can even change the color of this. Maybe I'll make it a light pink uh, color like it was showing me before. Make something like this, for example. So now we have the name, we have the date, super easy. Now you could also even add your logo here. Um, now I don't have a logo uploaded in the Canva, but what I can do is maybe if I go into the elements, maybe I can find something here that resembles a logo. Um, you know, we'll just pretend that this that this, I don't even know what this is. Um, this, we'll, we'll use this as our logo, just as an example to give you guys an idea. Uh, obviously you could upload your own logo and that's totally fine as well. Now I'm gonna make this white and you're not actually gonna see it because this is gonna become transparent eventually, but for the time being, I'm just gonna make it white. I'm gonna bump it up into the upper right hand corner here. And again, that's the nice thing about Canva is you can just kind of drag stuff around and make it really easy. I know a lot of people ask about how they can incorporate their logo, and this is a super easy way to do it. So now with the elements, one thing that I might want to do is I might actually want to add kind of like a border down here so that there's a little bit of a separation from my overlay and the background. So what I could do is I could actually just drag in like this box feature here. Make it a little bit bigger. And now maybe what I'll do is I'll actually bring that color back that we were using in the beginning. So I could do, let's see, I could try to find, I think it was like a beige color. Yeah, so we'll go with something like that. Uh, and we'll just keep it really simple. Of course, you can spend as much or as little time on this as you want, but really this is to give you guys uh, really a good example of how easy doing something like this can be. Now for the overlay, if I wanted to, I could be done here. But the cool thing about Canva and part of the reason that I like it so much is that we have a bunch of other design elements that we can use. So maybe for this wedding, it's going to be kind of floral themed. So I could actually look up, you know, floral and it's going to show me all of the different floral options that we have available. Uh, maybe I want to use something like this and I could size it around, make it a bit smaller. I can even 
rotate it a little bit, add it up here into this corner. And so you can get it really as creative with it as you want. Now you can copy and paste these as well so you have more than one of them. So maybe I'll do the same thing for this upper corner right here, just to kind of keep it pretty even. Yeah, so for the box, it looks like we have a comment from Erica. Hey, how's it going, Erica? So for the box, that's just an element. So just like I was typing floral up here, you could do the same thing, and it just has these shapes. So I just selected this box shape, and then I put it behind the text. So really pretty easy there. Now, if I go back and I search for floral again, now I'm going to try to change it up a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll go with this one. Or that's pretty much that is the same thing, actually. Um, let's see, is there anything else? This one, is this one different? Yeah, this one looks a little bit different. So what I could do is I could throw that here. I could make that a little bit lower or a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll even rotate it a little bit. Kind of get it out of the way. I could even have the text over, over top of it. That's fine as well. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the other side. Um, I'm just going to copy it and then move it over here. So again, I mean, this is just a really quick and, and easy example of what you can do, but it, it really is made to show you guys how easy this can be. And you can even take some of these elements and paste them again and really change it up a little bit. Um, maybe I want to have you know this one kind of overlapping. You could do that make them bigger and smaller and move them around rotate them completely do something like this so you can do a lot of different things with these uh, canva is pretty cool in that regard so we're gonna we're gonna say that I'm done now I'm really happy with my design and I'm ready to bring it into um, salsa so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this download button here I'm going to save it, but I'm going to save it as a PNG. And remember, it's important that you save it as a PNG because this is what's going to allow it to have that transparent layer uh, or the transparent background rather. And I'm going to select this transparent background option and I'm going to click download. And what that's going to do is it's going to make this white background transparent so that when I actually open it into in Salsa, uh, I'm going to be able to see my photo. So now if I go into the uh, Salsa event settings, I'm just in a, a new event that I've created. I'm gonna click on configure event up here. I'm gonna go into the event capture settings and I'm gonna click on overlays. Now I'm gonna click on add overlay here and we're gonna see all of the overlays I've actually uploaded in the past, but I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna upload the new one that I just made. And so I'm gonna click on upload file here. I'm gonna select that file that I had uh, had just exported or downloaded from Canva. We'll let that do its thing. Click on that. And now that's gonna be my overlay. And we can see that this gray background here shows us that it's transparent and we have the designs on all four corners and then the name right in the middle. So this is really great, really easy to do. And again, you can spend as much or as little time on this as you want. But now let's go into the photo templates and how the photo templates work, because that's certainly a little bit more I don't want to say confusing, but there's a little bit more of a learning curve there. So now that we have the overlay, we're going to say that our client wants to have a photo template for their photos, but they want to have this overlay for their uh, boomerangs and GIFs and um, videos. So we're going to leave this here and this is going to work automatically on everything that isn't a photo. We're going to go into the modes, the capture modes here. Make sure to select photo. We're gonna enable boomerang, GIF, and video as well, because again, that's what our client wanted. Uh, and then we're gonna click on this little gear icon in the upper right-hand corner of photos. Now, when I click on that, we're gonna be able to start to create our photo template design. And so I'm gonna click on use template library. And then if I actually click on this button up here where it says portrait three, uh, three four, I can click on this and click show all. And now this is going to show me all of the different photo template options that I have available to me. So you do have to select an option from here, uh, but there are a bunch of different ones available with a bunch of different, you know, is it going to have two photos, three photos, four photos, so on. So what I'm going to do is my client told me that they want to have a four by six uh, with three photos included. So I'm going to click on that design right here in the photo templates. 
I am going to see that, okay, this is what I'm working with. Now, the cool thing about Salsa is there are, um, with the photo templates, it'll actually tell you the size that you need to use in order for this to work properly. Now, I could also find this on the Salsa file requirements I was talking about. So if I go up here and I scroll back up to photo templates, four by six, it should be 1800 by 1200 pixels. I can find it there or inside of Salsa, it'll tell me right here. Now with the photo templates, it's a little bit different because you're going to see that there is an upload background option and there's also an upload overlay option. Now do not confuse this overlay for the overlay I've been talking about. Photo templates, you should almost think of them and I always use this, um, this kind of reference, but I always think of photo templates almost like a sandwich, right? You have your photo template background, you have your photos that go on top of it, and then you have an optional overlay for any detailing or any elements that you want to that you want to go on top of the photos, on top of the background, uh, kind of on top of everything. So the overlay in the photo template is completely optional. It is not something that you have to use. Uh, it's really just made to add, like again, detailing or special effects. Uh, so if it's your first time using the photo templates, I would probably stick with just the background. And once you feel a little bit more comfortable, move on to the overlays. But I'll show you guys how to, how to do both um, so that you guys have that available for you. So now for Canva, I'm gonna go back and this time I'm gonna make an 1800 pixel by 1200 pixel photo template. So I'm gonna go back to Canva here I'm gonna click on create a design again. And this time I'm gonna make sure that the custom size is 1800 by 1200 because that is, it was 1200, right? Yeah, 1200 pixels, because that is the size that I want um, for my photo template. So I'm gonna click create new design there. And it's gonna open up basically the same thing that we were working on before. This time it's just gonna be in a different size. So what I can actually even do is I can even go into this one and I can cop or I can select everything. And if you don't know, you can select everything with control A or command A if you're on a Mac. And then you can do control C or command C to actually copy everything. And now if I go back to my new design, I can do control V or command V if you're on a Mac and I can actually paste everything in. And we're gonna bring all of the same elements from my last design into this one. Now, obviously everything is a little too small, right? We're gonna have to resize and change some things up here, but at least this is going to allow me to use the same assets, the same elements, the same text, and I can keep everything very, very consistent for my client. So now if I go back into Salsa, just to kind of take a look, okay, so I have this photo template with three photos, and this takes up about half of the photo template. These three photos are gonna take about half of this up. So I need to make sure that when I'm making my photo template that all of the text, anything I want to be read, it's going to need to be here in the top half. So when I go back in the Canva now, I'm going to keep that in mind. First, I'm going to make everything this kind of beige, um, yellowish kind of color here. So I'm just going to make this big block uh, even bigger and I'm going to have that on top of everything. Now. Like I said, I need to make sure that really most of my design stays on this upper half. So I'm gonna take the name of the event, I'm gonna move it into this upper half up here. Of course, this is a way bigger design now, so I can even make the name of this you know, a bit bigger so that it's easier to see. I'll put that right in the middle again. I'm gonna take the date here, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna put that right in the middle as well. And now I have all of these different design elements that I can use and just kind of drag around and kind of customize again. So I'm gonna do really the same thing, make them a little bit bigger, put them into the corners here. Same thing with this one. And you can also select more than one uh, item in Canva as well. If you hold down shift um, while you're clicking both, you can select both of them. And this kind of makes it nice because you can actually resize uh, two elements at the same time. So I'm gonna bring these over here. Maybe I'll even uh, spin it around just a little bit. Make that a little bit bigger and bump that up here. Something like that. And actually one thing I might want to do is I might want to move this one up because it looks like it's kind of cutting off there. Or maybe move this one on top of it so that you can't see that that flower is being cut off. 
cool. So perfect, I've got that done. Now for the bottom part here, I'm gonna make sure to do really the same sort of thing. I'm gonna make these a bit bigger, spin these around as well. Or I guess I could leave them like this. Put those down in the corner. Same thing here, make that one a little bit bigger. Spin this one around and then put this down in the corner here. So now with the photo templates, you really want to obviously do a little bit of testing. You want to make sure that your photos are not going to be on top of any text or on top of anything that's you know important, right? We don't want to have photos on top of this. We want uh, people to be able to easily see the name of the event and the date. So now what I'm going to do with the photo template is basically the same thing. I'm going to click on download up here. I'm gonna save it as a PNG. You could save it as a JPEG as well for the photo templates, but just to keep everything super consistent, I'm gonna save it as a PNG. This time I am not gonna click on the transparent background because this is the background. I don't want this to be transparent. And then I'm gonna click on the download button here and it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna save it to my computer here. Click on okay. And then when I go back in the salsa, now I can click on upload background, upload that file find it on my computer, let that load here, and then I'm gonna be able to select that one. And what Salsa is gonna do is it's actually gonna put those three boxes on top of this image so I can get a good idea of what this would actually look like, right? So perfect, uh, the photos are not overlapping the text, they're not overlapping the date, everything looks really, really good here. Now. What I'm gonna do, this is kind of that more advanced feature I was talking about, adding that overlay for a little bit of detailing. Now again, remember this is not something you have to do. This is completely optional. I could click on save and exit right here and I'm good to go. Um, my design is done, the photo template's done, it's all ready. But if I wanted to maybe spice it up a little bit, maybe my client doesn't want these photos on top of the flowers, maybe they want the flowers on top of the photo. That's perfect, we can make that happen as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go back in the Canva. I'm going to delete everything. Now, what I'm gonna, when I say delete everything, there's a couple of things I'm gonna leave. So the name, I'm gonna delete that. The date, that's gonna be gone. This background, I'm gonna also delete that. These flower elements up top, I'm gonna to delete these because they're not going to be uh, my detailing. The only thing that I wanna keep are gonna be these two bottom flowers. And the reason that I'm doing that again is because I want those to overlap the photo. I want them to go, uh, I want them to overlay the photo, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to just leave it completely blank like this, leave those two flower elements. And now I'm gonna click on the download button here and I'm gonna click transparent background and make sure I'm saving it as a PNG. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna save this file, it's gonna remove that background, it's gonna make it a transparent file, and the only thing on this, um, on this uh, canvas is really gonna be these two flowers. So now when I go in the Salsa and I click on Upload Overlay, click on Upload File right here, I'm gonna find that file on my computer again, and then I'm going to click on that file. And now we're gonna see that overlay, because it's going on top of everything, it's gonna be over top of those photos. Now, I might wanna adjust this, of course, so that it's not so much on top of the photo, but this is kind of to give you guys a general idea of how this might work. Now, you don't have to do the same designs either, so one thing I could do as well is maybe I get rid of these. And maybe what I do here is, you know, maybe I wanna add some leaves. Um, under the elements, I'm gonna search for leaves. And maybe I just wanna have a couple of these leaves over top of the photos, right? Now this is really just to kind of give you guys an idea and show you what I mean. It doesn't have to be the same thing and I don't know 100% how this is gonna look because I'm just kind of winging it here. But we're gonna download that. Again, save it as a transparent background. Click on download here, click okay go back in the salsa, and now I'm gonna click on upload overlay, upload file, click on that new one I just made, and now we're gonna see just those two little leaves that I've added here. Click on that, and now you can see that those are on top of my photos, but these flowers are not. So you can do this however you wanted to. Maybe you wanted to get really, uh, really specific and you wanted to add that, um, 
you know, just these flowers on top of the corners. Maybe you want to make it a little bit smaller. You can really do whatever you want to do um, to add that detailing, or you don't have to do it at all, right? The overlay part of the photo template is completely 100% optional. So it is not something that you have to do. So now that I'm happy with how this looks, I'm actually just going to click on save and exit here. And now what's going to happen is anytime somebody goes to use my booth, if they use the photo mode, it is going to automatically take three photos and use the photo template. But if they use boomerang, GIF or video mode, it is going to automatically use this overlay that we created in the beginning. So uh, it's very easy to do. Like I said, this just takes a little bit of practice. There is a little bit of a learning curve behind it, but I really hope this shows you guys just how easy it can be to make these designs in Canva. Um, and again, you can spend as much or as little time on this as you want. So the more time you spend on it, you know, the better your designs are going to be and the higher quality they'll be as well. So really, really easy way to do this. Uh, let me see if we have any comments. Um, Erica, how do you get the cream color? So for the cream color, what I did was, um, if I go back to this first design, I just clicked on that box that I had made. And then this color up here in the upper left hand corner, you click on that and you can actually choose any color you want. And again, the cool thing with Canva even is you can actually see here because I have these flower elements, it'll show me the colors that are in that element. So if I wanted to make, you know, maybe I wanted to use for that box, that exact same uh, pink color that we see in these flowers, well, I could select that pink color and now it's going to match perfectly or maybe that beige or uh, the red. So Canva is really, really cool. And, and with that, you can make sure everything matches really, really nicely. I really needed to see this. I was totally confused. Yeah. And like I said, this stuff is pretty easy. It just takes a little bit of messing around with it and playing around with it. And it's not always laid out in the most easy to understand way either. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm really glad that it helped. That's uh, it's it's it can be tricky to say the least. So awesome. Well, it doesn't look like I have any more questions. Like I said, I'm gonna keep this one a little bit shorter than we might normally do on our live streams, really just because I want to be able to uh, keep this video short for you guys, so that if you ever need to come back and watch it again, you don't have to listen to me talk for an entire hour. Um, but just like any, any live streams we do, if you guys have any questions at all, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments, type it in the chat. Uh, you can also reach out to us at support at photoboothsupplyco.com. Uh, and same thing goes with your requests. If there's anything you ever wanna learn more about or see in these live streams, definitely let us know. Uh, we're certainly happy to, uh, to make it happen for you guys. So thank you guys for joining me. I hope that you guys all learned something and took something out of this. And I would love to see all of, this, all of the new designs that you guys are gonna make in Canva. So until next week in our next live stream, not 100% sure what the topic's gonna be yet. So give me some good ideas. Uh, I will see you guys then. Have a really great rest of your day and have an awesome weekend.